just can't keep doing the same things uh, at the same way, pretending that it's working. It's an investigation that was prompted by a serial killer preying on members of Toronto's LGBTQ plus community. And it looks at how Toronto police investigated their disappearances. Now, the recommendations in this review are expected to change how these cases are investigated and by whom as one final community town hall gets underway. 86,000 pages of documents, 235 interviews, including families of the victims, survivors, and 55 current and former Toronto police officers involved in the missing person investigation spearheaded by former retired Court of Appeal Justice Gloria Epstein. The report, scheduled to be released in January, is expected to recommend new models for policing, including whether police should be the ones handling certain calls, especially those associated with mental health. Ours is a systemic focus, so we're, we're looking at uh, what went wrong and how can it be rectified. They were high-profile missing persons cases that ended in tragedy, putting a spotlight on cracks in policing that members of the LGBTQ2S plus communities have long highlighted. Abdul Basid Faizi, Selim Essen, Andrew Kinsman, Majid Kahan, Dean Lusawik, Sarush Mahmoodi, Skandaraj Navaratnam, Krishna Kumar Kanagaratnam, victims of serial killer Bruce MacArthur, and the focus of a wide ranging civilian review exploring a number of angles, including systemic biases and discrimination. One of the community concerns has been that missing persons cases have been given low priority. Uh, one of the concerns expressed is that the differential treatment is given depending upon who is missing and who reports somebody missing. So we're looking at all of those issues. Also under review, the handling of two other cases that garnered criticism on how missing persons cases are investigated. Alora Wells, a transgender woman said to be experiencing homelessness, whose body was recovered from a ravine back in 2017. That same year, Tess Ritchie's body was found in the Church Wellesley Village, by her mother, not far from where she was last reported seen with friends. The hope that this review will change how police work with marginalized communities. It's not a black and white issue in that it's nothing is straightforward. Every, it's not linear process. It, there is so much complications and there are so many issues that individuals are facing like homelessness, like homophobia, like stigma, discrimination, like racism. That really does play a part in how people experience services and you just can't apply the same approach to everybody. Groups like the Alliance for South Asian AIDS Prevention have worked closely with the community participating in the town hall to express concerns, fears and trauma that existed long before this review and may persist after. I don't believe uh, that this inquiry will solve everything. I think that it is, uh, I think that it is one of many, many uh, adjustments uh, and many, many tools that need to be in play uh, to be able to take on a system. Now, those interested in having their voices heard one last time in this review are asked to go to missingpersonsreview.ca where they can sign up for Wednesday's virtual town hall where you can also learn more about this investigation. In Toronto's Church and Wellesley community, I'm Faisa Amin for City News.